Hi everybody. So I get a lot of questions about um, hip pain, sacroiliac pain, um, pain in the hips. So let me just start first by explaining that the hips, the pelvis is simply the center of the body. The muscles that attach onto the pelvis cross over to the legs and come up to the spine. It, our pelvis actually attaches our upper body to our lower body. So if we can realign the pelvis, we're going to get a lot of or get rid of a lot of these other pains. Knee pain is one of them. Um, knee pain is not the knee. <laughs> it, unless there's been an injury that has created um, a trauma to the knee itself, the knee is just the place in between the hip and the foot, and the muscles that cross over the knee start at the hip. So again, if we can alleviate a lot of the misalignments that are happening in the pelvis and the hips, we're gonna get rid of a lot of the torsioning that's happening through the spine and through the lower body. So let's get started. We just have a few quick exercises to do and um, this short flow should help alleviate your pain. You can do this every day. So I'm gonna get you to start by lying on your back. And draw your knees in towards your chest. And just go ahead and circle the knees. So the thoracolumbar lumbar fascia is a big fascia. It attaches onto the top of the iliac crest, the sacrum, and comes all the way up to intertwine with the oblique fibers at the side, transverses at the front, and also all the way to the back of the skull, the back of the head. So when we roll out our lower back, we're actually releasing this big long fascia and getting rid of some of those lines of tension. Then go ahead and circle in the opposite direction. So this rolling of our, or bring our knees in and rolling our back is actually by releasing that fascia, enabling some of the muscles that attach onto the back and then some of the organs that sit on top of that, the kidneys and um, the back of the body, allowing it free motion and mobility. Perfect, good, one more. And then we're just gonna take our heels toward the sky. So reach behind the thighs and draw the knees a little bit closer. Good. And then we're gonna keep our hand behind our right thigh, extend our left leg out, hover it above the mat. Good, and then bring it in and switch sides. So extend the right leg out long. And we should feel this thigh in the back of the hamstring on the right side on the left side, sorry. And then draw both knees in. Perfect. And go ahead and circle. Good job. And let your feet find the floor. So we're just gonna move through an easy bridge a couple of times. We're just gonna lift the hips. We're actually stretching out the hip flexors. And then lower back down. We're gonna do that a couple more times. So simply lift through the hips. If you wanna add the upper body as we lower the hips, just bring the arms above the head and arch through the spine. Good, and then bring it back up. Push the hands into the floor, lift the hips a little bit higher. Perfect, and extend back out. So most people have an anterior tilt on one side and then more of a posterior or neutral tilt on the other side. It gives them the illusion of having one leg longer than the other simply because the pelvis is slightly torsioned or rotated. It's quite normal. We all sit in cars. We all push with our right foot on the gas pedal. Uh, we all, or a lot of us, uh, cross our right legs over when we sit. So all of these compensation patterns, left side sleepers, um, so the right leg on top, over time, it's, um, these cause the compensation patterns that create these abnormal lines of pull in the body. Good, just one more time, perfect. And then draw the knees in and circle. Good. All right, this time reach behind your right knee and draw it all the way in toward the chest and stay here. I'm just gonna make some small circles with that knee. Good, open it out to the side. Perfect, come back to center and switch legs. So again, just draw that knee in as close as you can. Make some circles if you'd like. Good, 
Good. And then open the leg out to the side. Perfect. And then draw both knees back in toward the chest. And circle. All right, so remember that the sacrum is that small triangular bone that's at the base of the spine and sits in between those two hip bones. So if one side of the pelvis is more anteriorly rotated and the other side a little more posteriorly, we can see how at the back it's going to create abnormal pulls on that sacrum. So we're going to realign first the hip bones and then we're going to open up the hip bones to allow the sacrum to fall back into the right place. So let's start with that first. We're going to take our block, the long way first, and place it between our thighs. Squeeze the block, and then just let the knees rock side to side. Good. Come back to center. Squeeze the block and lift the hips. Perfect. Slowly lower back down to the floor. And we're going to go with the next level. So we're just going to open the block wide. Place the block between our knees, our thighs, and squeeze. And then just a little rock side to side. Keep squeezing the block. So as we squeeze the block, we're creating tension in our adductors. Our adductor is attached to the inside of the hip bones. Perfect. And then come back to center. Keep squeezing the block and lift the hips. Good job. And slowly lower back down. Perfect. Take the block out, draw the knees in toward the chest, and circle. So we activated our adductors, the ins muscles in the insides of the thighs, to help stabilize the hip. And now we're going to use the leg muscles in the outside of the leg. So you can use a scarf or you can use a strap, and you're going to place them around the legs. Let the feet fall open to hip width. You're going to squeeze in, push out and rock side to side. Good, and then come back to center, lift the hips, and lower back down. So we're gonna open the feet to hip width. I just want you to tie your scarf. Perfect. Keep pushing out and then rock side to side. So these are just like those windshield wipers typically that we do. Good. One more time. Good. Keep pushing out and lift the hips and hold for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and slowly lower. Perfect. So we're going to take the strap off and now we're going to set the pelvis. So we're going to push on the inside, on the outside of the thigh and reach above the knee. And we're going to push and pull as hard as we can and resist for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two and let it go switch sides push and pull hard as you can for ten nine eight seven six five four three two and let it go make two fists place in between your knees and squeeze in as hard as you can for eight seven six five four three two and let it go let the feet find the floor and we're just going to rock the pelvis. So you're going to tip the pelvis away and press the lower back down. We're going to do that a couple more times. Inhale, rock away and 
Exhale, push down. Two more times. And last one. Perfect. Roll it to one side. Come back to a seated position. All right. So that was your pelvis reset. You can do that as many times as you would like. It's going to help to loosen up the hips, loosen up the muscles around the hip bones themselves, and help the pelvis to reset itself. Let me know how it worked for you. Talk to you soon.